Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Since our nation's founding, the hard work and dreams of immigrants and refugees have helped make this country strong and prosperous. And now a professor at the University of Vermont is spotlighting current immigrants and refugees with a research project that looks specifically at immigrants who are aging in this country. As part of our ongoing partnership with UVM Center on Aging, I want to welcome two guests. Fiona Patterson is a professor in UVM's Department of Social Work. Also joining us is UVM graduate student Supriya Surchen. The two will be working together on a study that, we'll talk, that we're going to talk about in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome both of you. Thank, Thank you so much for you. being with us. Thank you. Let's start out talking about how you two came to this mutual um, interest? Well, well, both of us are interested in multicultural family, so um, and, and multi-generational. So the idea of different age groups, maybe li more being more likely to live together closely, um, and people who come from other countries to this country, either as immigrants or refugees, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we. We share that personal experience of, of having been immigrants at one point in our lives, but also um, interest in working with people. So yeah. why don't you tell mm -hmm. a little? Yeah, and also during the summer of 2012, uh, with the help of Vermont Refugee Resettlement Program, uh, Champlain Valley Agency on Aging and Champlain Senior Center, I started a group, support group for elderly Bhutanese refugees, and at that time you came along and you were there, um, present with the group, and right. yeah, you supported me too. Right. Yeah. And and that that's how we got to the research that we're that we're about to do mm -hmm. is um, with I interviewing the the people who who were m mainly Nepali to begin with, but they lived in Bhutan for a period of time. And then they they were moved back to Nepal mm -hmm. to refugee camps, yeah. and so so they've been displaced really twice. This group, and and it's quite a large group, large group for Vermont to mm -hmm. have. Um, it's some somewhere over ninety. I was very surprised yeah. to hear that. I thought maybe there'd be a dozen. I know it's 90 plus and also they have uh, one thing is like they lived in refugee camp in Nepal for 19 plus years right. so yep so, so that's very so, fascinating. so it, it's been it's been complicated mm -hmm. for, for them but but before that we both have kind of a background in in talking with older Im immigrants and refugees um, in, in my case I did my my doctoral work um, in, in Philadelphia mainly, in interviewing elders who had, well, they had to be 60 or older when I interviewed them, and they had to have come. Uh, we're seeing pictures of some of them, um, some of the people that I interviewed. They, they all came from e either Asia or the Caribbean, and the Asian ones came from, from um, India, China, and Nepal, and then the, the others came from, from the West Indies or Puerto Rico. So they had very, very different experiences, but I found similarities in their lives um, at that point as they, were, as they were getting older. And then again, those same similarities seem to apply to refugees, mm -hmm. we're, we're now learning. And what were some of those issues that you found? Well, they, they, had, they had worked hard, they, they were very tied, they tended to be very tied to their family of birth. Um, even more so sometimes in the family that they that they married into. Um, work was always important for them, what, whatever class they came from. Um, they had worked kind of long and hard. There were, there were gender issues for them. They mainly came from societies where men were dominant. But when they came to this country, the, the adjustment seems to go better for women. Mm -hmm. And this even includes older women. Um, they they can more easily get jobs. They they don't have the loss of status that men sometimes have. So so these types of issues um, we find are also similar for people who come as refugees. Mm -hmm. And then and then Supriya has worked with refugees, so you can yeah. explain that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in 2008, uh, I had the privilege to work with the most vulnerable population here in uh, Vermont, and I worked with 
uh, I worked for three and a half years with Vermont Refugee Resettlement Program, and uh, uh, I mo mainly worked with children and elders and families. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was a very great and very meaningful experience for me. And I also, it was a very great and rewarding opportunities for me, and there was a challenge in its own way. And uh, one of the issues uh, that that's very common for both uh, older immigrants and older refugees are language issues. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah, because yeah. uh, they both are, uh, most of them are very uh, not literate in their own native language, so that's very hard. And also right. the social service uh, tend to stop in certain point, like for a couple years, social services tend to stop and they have to get citizenship in order to continue that service. So yeah, the citizenship is also another piece that they really struggle with. So those are huge changes for somebody later in life. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the citizenship is is very challenging and and under certain circumstances a person does not have to take the citizenship test. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certain illnesses and disabilities and so on, but but otherwise they pretty much do have to take it and you know move towards citizenship, mm -hmm. um, which, which is which is a hard a it's, hard issue for yeah. an older person. <laughs> yeah, because you have to. I took it in two thousand nine, and mm -hmm. it's a mostly memorization. You have to memory a lot, memorize a lot, right. and for certain people, it's just hard to memorize like everything, and it's all in English. Right. Yeah. So and then you don't have the interpreter there, so it's pretty challenging. And so, what are you hearing from some of these these um, older folks that you've talked about? I know you worked with immigrants and so forth, but with your experience as well, what is the the biggest thing for them to get over? The mm -hmm. biggest hurdle? Well, it, I think it, part of it is change in culture yeah. for, for them. Um, even even lifestyle, the speed of life. I mean, the people that I talked to, you know, years ago were, were just saying. Americans were in too much of a hurry. They they weren't they weren't necessarily friendly. Um, you know they would describe things in their uh, in their own countries where they could just go to a neighbor's house without you know big plans or anything without being invited. Um, they didn't they didn't travel large distances. You know things weren't just so confusing. Um, it sounds very isolating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So old, older people tend not not to be immediately getting jobs, so so that it, it is isolating. If <clears throat> if they live in a city, for instance, and there's a huge Chinatown, and they're they're, they're Chinese, then they can they can interact with people with the same background and not really know Americans. Um, that's a little different in Vermont, you know, where where we're a smaller place, and mm -hmm. so. They, they do have to interact, but it, 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 it's difficult for them to, to get used to that. And, and just the idea that they're going to spend the rest of their life here, I think that's, that's a very tough one to, uh, to, to handle, mm -hmm. you know, um, emotionally. Yeah. But, but there are differences in religion, in, in customs. And mostly the elders who come here, are they following family members who've come first? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. e even the people that I talked to were, were doing the same thing. They, just the contact with family is so... So family so ties trump yeah. so you important. Know, the, all the uncomfortable aspects of uprooting yourself, to putting yourself right. basically on another planet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think the one thing they are very happy to get away from is refugee camp. Because, right. uh, yeah, I have heard many, many stories where refugee camp, like in refugee camp, there is no hope, no future. So they are so happy to get away from that place. And then there is, there is also a large fear being in refugee camp because most of the time women are get abused or younger boys are just uh, taken away to uh, get involved with soldiers or other mm -hmm. uh, like rebel rebellion groups, so they are very happy to get away from like those like mm -hmm. those situations. So. Yeah, there's some I've heard some pretty amazing mm -hmm. stories of just being basically on the run for years with your entire family. Yes, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right, and 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 that is the difference between a, a refugee and an immigrant. A, a immigrant, 
is planning, you know, may come for the same kinds of reasons, but for a refugee, it's often getting e either either coming from a camp or just getting away from real danger where mm -hmm. family members ha may have been killed and or lost. And, and I mean, s separation is such a huge thing when you're coming from another country. It's <clears throat> it's what you leave behind in, in terms of the history and the memories, but but also people, mm -hmm. you know, people that you can't find anymore and, and often these are, are very large families and have had s such negative experiences you know when when refugees are, are seeking or receiving mental health help here it, it's always a huge issue because you know we don't necessarily understand what they've been through you know anything including torture um, and and from our concept of of mental health, it, it may not fit at all. In fact, some of the women that I talked to, or many of them said they, they could be involved in, in social services here, but, but mental health was, there was sort of a, a bar across that, that you, if you had personal problems, you dealt with them within your family. You would never tell someone else, you know, that, you're, that there were problems with your marriage or, or that you know, you were worried or that you were having nightmares. And I mean, it's sad in a way because um, they're not able to get the help. But then if they are going to get it, it needs to be people like Supriya who have a, a much broader cultural understanding. And then I think somebody is, is likely to be more comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, talking to you. And so that's some of the things that your, your research has turned up. Yes, yes, in the, in the past, yeah. So tell me about this new project that you're just getting underway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we are. So, like we said earlier, that there are uh, 90 plus uh, uh, elderly Nepali-speaking Bhutanese living here in Vermont. So we are hoping to interview at least 30 of them, and we want to like uh, not ask them direct question, but like have a picture of their home country of or the refugee camp or life in Vermont and we'll have the picture and then have them tell their stories to about yeah about right. it to everyone and then we we'll, we're going to write that stories and then mm. present it to the world so yeah yeah we, i mean we're, we're we're looking at ways to not just have an interview that's a question you know where we ask you xyz and mm. then and people in these situations tend to, to give very, very short answers. So, so we thought of the idea of having, having photographs and, and we'll show the same photographs in the same order to each person and just see if we can get them to talk, mm -hmm. to feel comfortable yep. talking about what they see and what they remember from that. So yeah. we're kind of trying a slightly different approach. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you think you'll hear us from common themes? Uh, yes, yes yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I think I think we really it mm -hmm. did you know when I did my research in the late 1990s um, uh, uh, people had to be able to speak English t to talk with me and and how well they spoke English varied very much um, so th you know that was what I was thinking about right away how how can we have another way of of opening a dialogue um, and and it's a bit of an experiment, but we're. Yes, <laughs> but uh -huh. we're Do you think that these that. women are going to be more open to s talking to you because you understand their language and it's not quite that obstacle? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and also I have had a great experience. Like when I, one time I went to one house and I just sat and spoke with one elderly woman, and she just like brought all the pictures from camp and from. Bhutan and she showed it to me and then she just told the whole stories and in stories like I really really found a couple surprises mm -hmm. so yeah they are very good with opening so you just have to be there present and open your heart to listen so yes mm -hmm. that's all matter so yeah but what we, I mean we know from our own experiences in America older people like to tell stories absolutely and, and yes. have such rich histories and experiences and I you know I think the same thing will will ap apply to that. Well we'd mm -hmm. love to have you come on once you finish your research and find out oh, more about what you. you've learned. 
Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.